go ahead thank you so much for tuning into this video and thank you so much for watching this channel a very important update has come up to the iso 27001 standard a new update has been created by iso in the month of october 2022 so the standard has been revised now so all of you who are watching this video just make sure that you now start studying the new standard this video from now onwards we will be looking into what all the new standard entails what are the new requirements what are the different new clauses what are the different new controls what are the additions or any modifications that have been done in the new standard so this is part 1 that i am creating for you along with this i will also be creating subsequently uh, the other parts as well so my agenda is to actually break the standard into different parts so that it becomes easy for you to understand most of the times i have seen that people struggle understanding the requirement standard itself so i will make sure that i will simplify the requirement standard for you i will simplify all the clauses for you we will go through all the sections one by one so that you get clarity in terms of what the standard actually wants you to conform to because most of the times people get confused there itself so please watch out all these videos very carefully and keep a pen and paper handy because you will have to create a lot of notes unfortunately i cannot share the standard the new standard which is in front of me right now uh, from which i will be detailing out all the you know details and uh, clearing out any doubts that you might have i cannot share it with you as per the compliance by iso but i will be explaining the standard to you in these videos the new standard so what is the name of the new standard first of all let us try to understand this what is the name now now new standard is iso iec 27001 2022 and the name is information security cyber security and privacy protection information security management system requirements so this is the new name of the standard okay so you have to understand that they have incorporated a lot of different aspects now you see cyber security you see privacy protection also as part of the information security management system the isms as part of the requirements you now see these as additions okay so the requirement documents that we will be going through it specifies all the requirements which are there for establishing implementing maintaining and continually improving the information security management system that is the isms within the context of your organization that is very important okay because you have to understand that it will vary from organization to organization it can't be the same for all the organizations okay so the document that we will be going through will also include requirements for the assessment and treatment of information security risks okay which are tailored to the needs of the organization again okay and as you might be already aware if not then let me clarify that the requirements that we will be going through in this document are very generic and are intended to be applicable to any or all organizations regardless of your type size or nature of the organization okay and if you are watching the standard for the first time if you are watching this video for the first time then you have to understand that excluding any of the requirements that are specified in clauses 4 to 10 is not acceptable at all 
okay so we will be going through clauses clause 1 clause 2 clause 3 clause 4 up till clause 10 one by one and each clause has detailed sub clauses as well we will go through them as well but you have to ensure that the requirements that are specified in clause 4 till clause 10 you have to abide by them you have to understand those requirements and you have to incorporate them okay if you will not do that then you will not be able to conform to the new standard now having said that having uh, i think laid out the initial context of these videos let me start out by telling you the high level overview of the new standard okay what all we have okay so in the initial you know index which i am seeing right now you have initial same type of you know scope normative reference terms and definitions now i am coming to clause 4 directly clause 4 now states that context of the organization okay and under context of the organization you have 4.1 4.2 4.3 4.4 again 4.1 you have understanding the organization and its context similar to what we had previously then you have 4.2 understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties again similar to what we had earlier then you have 4.3 where you have determining the scope of the information security management system again something which was already there before so i am kind of going through the new standard okay so that you understand what was there before and if there is any change then you will obviously come to know that so then you have 4.4 which is information security management system this is the fourth clause context of the organization now coming to the fifth clause which is leadership i am going at a very high level for right now for your understanding so that you understand what is there in the new standard because a lot of people might be thinking that it would be entirely changed or you know what what all is there so now i am coming to next part which is leadership under leadership, you have three points, uh, three sub clauses 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. Under 5.1, you have leadership and commitment. Under 5.2, you have policy. Under 5.3, you have organizational roles, responsibilities, and authorities. Okay, so these are three pointers, sub clauses under leadership leadership and commitment 5.1 5.2 is policy and 5.3 is organizational roles responsibilities and authorities now after that i'm coming to six which is planning and under planning you have two sub clauses which is 6.1 which is actions to address risks and opportunities okay and then you have 6.2 in 6.2, you have information security objectives and planning to achieve them, okay, which is kind of what we had earlier. But under 6.1, you have three subsections more where I say that you have actions to address risks and opportunities. You have three subsections now, which is 6.1.1, which is general, 6.1.2, which is information security risk assessment, then you have informa uh, information security risk treatment also as a separate section in 6.1.3. Okay, so this is the layout now under planning. Okay, after that, you come to support, which is the seventh one. Under support, you have five sub clauses you have 7.1 resources, you have 7.2 competence, you have 7.3 awareness, you have 7.4 communication. So they have divided now uh, very, you know, classically they have divided it. So under 7.5, you have documented information. Then under 7.5, you have sub clauses also. You have 7.5.1, you have 7.5.2, you have 7.5.3 also. Under 7.5.1, you have general, you have uh, 7.5.2, you have creating and updating. And 7.5.3, you have control of documented information. So under documented information, under support, you have three subsections. 
general creating and updating of documented information and control of documented information so this is clause number uh, seven that i am telling you about coming to clause number eight which is operations you have under operation three sub clauses now 8.1 8.2 8.3 under 8.1 you have operational planning and control under 8.2 you have information security risk assessment under 8.3 you have information security risk treatment so these are the three sub clauses now which are self-explanatory so i will not go into detail this is just a very high level overview that i'm going through for now after that clause number nine is performance evaluation uh, which is broken again into three subsections 9.1 9.2 9.3 9.1 you have monitoring measurement analysis and evaluation 9.2 you have internal audit and internal audit again is broken down into two subsections which is 9.2.1 and 9.2.2 in 9.2.1 you have general and in 9.2.2 you have internal audit program so now they have introduced that also wow so after that uh, 9.3 is management review under management review also you have three subsections now which is general management review inputs and management review results so there is a lot of change that i am also observing here as you might be you know uh, observing as well which is there in the new standard itself there are some changes clearly evident now uh, just going through this uh, index document itself is clearly highlighting that uh, which was not there in the earlier standard or in fact the kind of uh, you know uh, detailed detailed uh, you know overview that is coming right now is kind of entirely new uh, so we will go into much details as well into all of these clauses as well so that we can get a very detailed uh, you know analysis as well of what all these uh, you know these uh, clauses stand for and what what are they uh, trying us to comply with in the new standard now after that coming to the last one which is 10 which is improvement so uh, under improvement under clause number 10 you have two sub clauses now which is 10.1 and 10.2 under 10.1 you have continual improvement and under 10.2 you have non-conformity and corrective action so these are the two subsections under improvement so now in this video i will not go into much details i just wanted to give you a very high level you know overview of what the new standard has now in the next video onwards i will start with the, the initial explanation itself i will go through all the clauses i will go through context of the organization uh, starting from understanding the organization and its context it might be repetitive for most of you who have already seen the previous videos but i just want to cover the new standard from the scratch guys it will help you to understand the whole grasp of the standard and it will help you understand from these uh, you know uh, first level itself there are new controls that are added in the standard in the new standard we will go through them as well so in the next video i will you know make sure that i will give you a very high level overview of all the new controls which are there and we will go through all the controls and uh, going forward i want to actually clear out you know all the clauses uh, in much details because people struggle with clauses understanding of the clauses what do they mean so that's where i want to focus on mainly in the new standard also so i will make sure that i will uh, try to clarify as much as possible in the new standard itself and if you have any follow-up questions for what we discussed today feel free to add in the comment section i will surely uh, you know try to respond back um, i have uh, some comments here okay uh, let me see watch your videos and it has helped me a lot of since i don't have a okay uh it's actually a very interesting uh, you know uh finding that you have uh nagaraju and thank you so much for pointing out here uh, i would like to address it uh, you are you are getting uh, difficulties validating the evidence against the controls so uh, there are different ways to do that okay so 
i think it won't be a good idea to address it in this video however i have taken a note of your uh, you know query i will try to address it in a separate video itself nagaraju if that would be fine because uh, i think this is a query for many of the uh, you know people out there who might be struggling with the same there are different ways of doing this so i would like to explain them in a separate video so that people who are watching this video this is actually intended for the new standard itself so i do not want to confuse them so hope that is fine for you uh, any anyone has any comments any feedback feel free to add on the comment section on this uh, video guys and thank you so much for watching i will not make this video long uh, but in the next one i hope i will try to deliver as much as uh, clarity on the new standard that is my end goal here so that people do not struggle with it thank you so much for watching take care bye bye